Welcome to this video about how to publish a ClickSense mashup on an external web server, in this case an Internet Information Server or IIS. In this demo environment I have two servers. I have my ClickSense server running on a server called SenseCloud and then my IIS running on a server called Windows 2012-0. That is basically the environment needed for this demo. Let's go ahead and look at the hub. From the hub, click on the menu and select Dev Hub. What you see here is that I have some mashups already created. If you want to see how to create mashups, please watch one of the videos on how to do integration with ClickSense. If I click on a mashup and select View, you can see that I have a mashup which is an application reporting on a help desk solution where I show some visualizations from the underlying Sense app. They are all integrated as in the standard ClickSense interface. This mashup is hosted on the Sense server at the moment, and I want this to be published on my IIS on the other server. The first thing I need to do is go into the ClickSense server and open the Windows Explorer and the C drive. If you can't see the program data directory here, then type it in as it is a hidden directory. Go to Click, Sense, Repository, Extensions, and find the directory called the same name as your mashup, in my case V002. Copy the directory to the clipboard and go back to the IIS server. Here I will create a new directory, which I will call Demo. Go into the directory and paste in the content from the clipboard. We can look at the files in the directory and confirm they are all there. Now I will copy the path to my clipboard and I will go into my IIS Manager and create a new website. I will call the website Mashup and I will paste the physical path from the clipboard. I'm not using port 80 for anything else, so I'll use port 80. Click OK. Let's look at the Mashup page. Right click on the HTML file and browse. Now we see the web page with static text and so on but the visualization elements are not shown. A good thing to do here when you start debugging is to see what error messages you get. If you are using Chrome, you can go to the menu, select More Tools and Developer Tools, and then you will find some error messages on the Console tab. This one is showing that we are pointing to some resource files hosted on the Sense server, but we are looking at them on the IIS server. So the file we have to look at is the HTML file, and then we can see there is something which is not defined in the JS file or the JavaScript file. Let's take the HTML file first. Open the HTML file in Notepad++. In this case, we can see that we have a reference which expects the sense files to be on the same server so we need to change that to our Sense server. I will use https colon double backslash sense cloud and then I will add in the virtual proxy I'm using to authenticate. If you look at our security videos, you can see how to configure a virtual proxy. I will copy that and paste it in here as well. So now we are getting those files from the Sense server instead of looking for them in the IIS. I will save and if I go back to the browser and refresh, hopefully we will get fewer errors. We can still not see the visualization because it reports a requirement not defined from the JS file. So let's look at what that is. Open the JS file in Notepad++. The important part here is from the prefix variable to the definition of the config. 
because here is where we tell the mashup where the Sense installation is. As this was created either on the Sense server or with the local ClickSense client, it assumes that it is hosted on the same server. What we have to do is identify which virtual proxy we are using for authentication. In my case, it is called VP and we need a forward slash before and after the name. So if you are using the default virtual proxy, you still need to put in a forward slash, otherwise the base URL will not be correct. The next item is the host. Here it is assumed that the Sense installation is on the same server as the one running the mashup, which is not the case. I will replace this with my Sense server name, SenseCloud. The prefix is set from the variable we just configured. It is assumed that we are running ClickSense on the same port as the mashup, which is actually not the case in this scenario. The mashup runs on port 80 and ClickSense on 443. So change to port 443, and then we can be sure that we are hitting ClickSense on the correct port. Here the isSecure field assumes that we are running ClickSense on the same protocol, which is not correct either. This will evaluate as false, but it should be true as our ClickSense installation runs on HTTPS. Change this to true and save the file. Let's go back to the browser and refresh our page. Now the problem we have is that we are not authenticated. If I go to the QMC, you will see that I have turned off Windows Authentication. Open Virtual Proxies and double-click on the one called VP. Click on Authentication in the menu to the right, and put an X after Windows in the Windows Authentication pattern. Now it will not use Windows Authentication. Then I can be sure that I'm not logged in with the user I'm logged into the server when reaching the virtual proxy VP. Let's try to go to the URL, changing to access through our virtual proxy, and go to the hub. It asks for my credentials and I will log in. Now that I'm authenticated, let's try to go back to the mashup and refresh the browser. The errors disappeared and the objects are now visible. That's good! At this point, we run it on localhost, which will not be the case by the end. So let's change localhost to the server name, Windows 2012-0. When the page is refreshed, we can see that we get another error, this time a WebSockets error. This is because our IIS server name is not whitelisted in the virtual proxy. I will copy the server name and go to the QMC. Select Virtual Proxies, double-click on the one we are using, VP, and select Advanced on the menu to the right. In the WebSocket Origin whitelist, click Add New Value and paste the domain name. Remember, this is just the domain name, so delete the slash at the end and the HTTP colon double backslash or HTTPS colon double backslash. Click Apply and then OK. Go back to the mashup and refresh. I will be logged out now, so let me log in again by providing my credentials. Now that we are authenticated, we will go back into our mashup and refresh. Now we can see the objects when we are running on the domain name. To recap, the important files at which to make changes are the HTML file and the JS file. 
In these files, we have to make sure they are pointing to the ClickSense installation with the correct virtual proxy and ports. If you have a mismatch between HTTP and HTTPS between the two servers, make sure that you get that fixed in the two files mentioned. In many cases when using a mashup, the authentication is not Windows authentication, but the ticket authentication in ClickSense. You will issue a ticket based on an external authentication system. For instance, if you have a portal or SaaS solution where your customers already log in, and then the user should be redirected back to the mashup. A common challenge is that a ticket is issued and the user is redirected back to the mashup. By the way, if you want to see how to issue tickets, we have another set of videos which can take you through that process. In this case, the ticket is there, but the user has never hit the ClickSense server. In this way, you don't get the session cookie you need to see the mashup, because you have the key, but it has never been used. Let us look how to solve this. Basically, you need to upload a file to the ClickSense server. If I go back to my desktop, you will see that I have a redirect page here. This part can be deleted. This snippet is provided with this video. If I take this file and upload it in the QMC, then we can redirect to this page with the ticket as a parameter, and then this page will take the user back to the mashup. Now the session cookie is there. Let's go back to the QMC. Go to Content Libraries, go into the default, click on Content, and click the Upload button on the bottom. I select the file from my desktop and click Upload. Now we have the reader.html file, so that can redirect us back. Remember that the file is under Content slash Default. Here I have a Get Ticket Demo, and again, if you want to see how that is done, we have another set of videos on that topic. I will provide a user directory and a user ID, and then click Go. We can see that I get a ticket back. Now we can redirect to ClickSense to get the session cookie, and then we will be redirected back to the mashup. I will copy the ticket and go down here to make the URL. I just need to replace the ticket. It is important that we use the virtual proxy from which we use to get the ticket, so I specified that here as well. Then you get the ticket, go to reader.html, and provide the ticket as a parameter called click ticket, which will then authenticate the user on ClickSense and redirect you back to the mashup. Click launch and now we can see that we are coming back to the mashup and can see the object. So remember, it is not enough to issue the ticket to make the mashup work. You need to hit the ClickSense server with the ticket and then you are redirected back to the mashup. This is how you publish a mashup on an external web server. Thanks for watching this video.